page 140, Kuf Mem, Perikastrim, Tolin, which was hanging, suspending. Itmar, Chadash Shalasho Me'erev Shabbat, mustard needed from before Shabbat. Lemachar, on the following day, on Shabbat, Amarav, Memachor Bichli Aval Lobiad. So you can steep it, I've got steep it, with a utensil, but not by hand. He says dissolve it. But so you can dissolve it, but yeah, I like that better, thank you. Uh, you can dissolve it in liquid, but not by hand. Uh, what does it mean, but not by hand? But not with his hand. As using a vessel diverges from the normal method of preparation. Now, normally, they would have stirred it up with their finger, probably. Really? Well, I'm only guessing. Kneading by hand. See, if you're kneading by hand and yeah. you want to add liquid to it, you pour the liquid in and continue the motion with your hand. Be the normal thing. Uh, so they're, what they're doing is they're continuing to knead it on Shabbos in an irregular way. In a sense. They're breaking it down by adding more liquid to it. You've got a base and you want something that's runny. Huh. It's my guess. I'm only guessing. You want something that's runny? Yes. Yeah. Amalei Shmuel. Bayad. What? By hand? Atu, oh, as in, isn't it, uh, is it prohibited to do it with your hand? Atu kol yom biyad. But does one dissolve it by hand on any other day? Obviously you wouldn't. Ma'achal chamorim hu. Is it the fodder of donkeys that you would use your hand to do it? Ela amar shmuel. One may dissolve it with one's hand, but not with a utensil, which is the opposite. Itmar. Rabbi Elazar Amar, Echad Zev Echad Ze Asur. Both styles are prohibited. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Echad Zev Echad Ze Mutar. Abai v'rava de amre tavayehu. So both said, Ein halacha ke Rabbi Yochanan. The halacha is not according to Rabbi Yochanan. Kam Rabbi Yochanan b'shitatei de Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Yochanan took up Rabbi Elazar's view. Uh, meaning that you can't mix it in any yeah. manner. Come, Rabbi Elazar, b'shita teji Shmuel, and Rabbi Elazar took up Shmuel's view that um, you can only that you're allowed to mix it by hand. Abay and Rava de Amrei Tavayehu, Abay and Rava then both said, Halacha Rabbi Yochanan, which is to prohibit it, prohibit mixing in any way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ime Dabaye Avdele Velo Achal. Abaye's mother prepared for him, oh, this is the foster mother. foster mother, prepared for him the mixture and he did not eat it. Regard, I assume, regardless of the way she mixed it. Devitu Dezira Avdele Laravchia Bar Ashi Velo Achil. The wife of Zeira prepared it. Uh, for Ravash, Ravchi Barashi, and he didn't need it. And, and Ravchi Barashi was her husband's student, according to this. Was husband's Ah, okay, that makes sense. I see. Amra le, le Rabach avidi le v'achal v'at lo achlat. I have prepared it for your teacher, and he ate it, and you won't. Amra Rava. Bar Shaba, Hava Keimna Kame de Ravina. I was once saying before Ravina, O Vachshi Le Beshufta de Tuma Vachal. And I stirred it for him with a stalk of garlic 
and he ate it. <coughs> Ama Mazutra, I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. Or actually turn it up. Okay. Ama Mazutra, Le Tilcha Kechol Hanesha Matata, the Halakha does not follow any of these teachings. Ela ki hadi itma, but rather it caused with that which we said. Chadal shilasho me'er Shabbat, mustard which was mixed from before Shabbos. L'macham emacho ben beyad ben bekli. The following day one may dissolve it both by hand and with a utensil. Ben noten l'tocho dvash. And one may, can also add honey to it. V'loi trof ela me'arev. But one should not beat the mixture, but merely stir it. Yeah? And he may not beat it forcefully as would a craftsman, but he may mix it gently. Mm. Mm. I hope we get an answer on this. <laughs> because I'm, I'll be making mustard paste. Will you? No. <laughs> you get to say for paste, for you know, you're uh-huh. mustard paste. Um, uh, shalayim, cress. Do you have cress? Yes. She... Shachan me'er Shabbat, which was chopped before Shabbat. Lemachar, the following day, noten letochan shemen v'chomet. So on Shabbos, one may add into it the choppings of oil and vinegar. Oh, sorry, one may add to the choppings oil and vinegar. Umam shich letochan amita, and then add amita into it. Velo yitrof ela me'arev, but one should not beat, only stir it. Shum shirisko me'er Shabbat, garlic which was ground up before Shabbos, l'machan noten l'tocho pul u'grisin. The following day one may add beans or split beans. Velo yishchok elam me'arev. And you shouldn't pound it, the mixture, but merely stir it. Umam shechet hamitza l'tochan. And then add amisa. What's amisa? Ah, my amisa? Amitza? Ninya, or as we say today, nana, mint. Is that right? Yep. Amar Abaye, Shma Mina, Hai Ninya Ma'alya Latachale. Learn from here, adding mint is beneficial to a crest. <laughs> In other words, it's a, a cooking hint. <laughs> it's a, it's our, first, given. our first uh, cooking tip. There's probably room for... Uh, Talmudic cooking book. Talmud cooking book. That is a great idea. Wow. Brilliant, Peter. Brilliant. Eat the way the sages did. You may not be able to think their thoughts, but you can eat their food. (laughs) Hang on. There's a metaphor in there about eating their words. Oh, that's a thought, yeah. Uh, I think that's a really good one now that I think about it. Eat the words of Talmud. (laughs) Eat the words of the sages. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. The Ozin Inomlin be Shabbat. We may make Inomlin on Shabbat. Oh, don't tell me there isn't May Inomlin. What's Inomlin? Do you know? Um, uh, it comes out. Oh, here we go. Tan Rabbanan. Ozin Inomlin be Shabbat. The Enosin Alut. Uh, aluntit, so we can make inomlin on Shabbos, but we can't make aluntis on Shabbos. The ezohi inomlin, the ezohi aluntit, inomlin yain udvash u pilpel. So it's wine mixed with honey and pepper. Yes. Aluntit yain yashan u maim tzlulin ve'arafar simon. It's aluntis is old wine. With clear water and balsam. Read on. The Afar Simon. Yanyashan, old wine, or mantle in clear water. With the Afar Simon. Afar Simon. That's a per. Okay. Isn't Afar Simon a persimmon or something? Um. Probably 
probably not at this time, because mm-hmm. persimmon comes from China, so literally. Oh. So they probably wouldn't have had, I believe it comes from some China originally, so they wouldn't have had persimmon at this stage probably, because, I mean, there was contact, but it was over such a tremendous distance. Makes me wonder what, where balsam comes from. This, is there a balsam plant? Yes, yes. It's a balsam tree. Um, And there's a biblical (coughs) reference to the balsam. I can't remember what it is, but there is a a sort of... uh, I suspect, I do not know, but I think um, it's a sort of um, ingredient in spice. Um, You know, that it's uh, a sap that's ground up into a powder or something like that. Because it's definitely a balsam tree. Okay. Uh Masuta Lameka, which is made to cool off those who use the bathhouse. That's what Unwanted is for. Yes. And he's added um it is prohibited to prepare it on Shabbat because it is a form of remedy. Uh-huh. And the other is a drink. Uh-huh. So that's why you can have one, but not the second one. Very interesting. Amar Rav Yosef, Zimna Chada lit Batar Mar Ukva Leve Bani. One time I went after Mar Ukva into a bathhouse. Ki Naki Atai Ashkian Kamra Chad Kasa. When I came out, he brought me one cup of wine to drink. Ve Chashi Mibinta Derashe Dereshi Ve Ad Tufra Dechari. And I felt its effect. Uh, from the hair on my head down to the nails on my feet. The e ashkian kasa harina havai mistfina dume menakuli mizchuta de almadate. And if he had given me a second cup to drink, I would be nervous that uh, the he- heaven would deduct from my merits uh, the re- my reward in the world to come. So, Yep, that's it. And he hasn't expanded it. My guess is that the effects are so drastic that a second cup might shorten his life, in which case carrying out an action that shortens your life is not uh, something that heaven admires and your reward in the world to come would be reduced. I'm right. guessing that's what right. So, uh So, Peter, Rashi says... Oh. Rav Yosef felt that the wine's chilling effect was severe enough to bring him close to death. Being saved from this fate would re- would require that he use up some of the reward earned through his good deeds, which would otherwise have been preserved for his reward in the world to come. Alternatively, Rav Yosef claimed that drinking the wine gave him much pleasure, and had he had a second cup, the pleasure would have been so great that it would have been deemed as though he had received a portion of his reward in the world. Yeah. So parallel with my father tried cocaine once. Mm. And uh, they, he found the effect so pleasant that he didn't dare try it a second time because he was sure that he would become addicted. This would be back in the late 30s. Yeah there would have been that understanding of opium and all that sort of stuff. Wow. That's very interesting. But there is Marufa who drinks it daily. Shani Marufa de Dashbe. He was accustomed to drinking it. <coughs> Mishnah. Ein Shorin et ha chiltit before Shrin. We may not soak asfetida. In warm water. That's curious to use that word in English, and there is, that word does not exist in the Hebrew. Well, what he uses here, in lukewarm water is the way he translates it. And he added to prepare a medicinal drink from it. Yeah, but it, yours also said asphatiza? Yes. A gum resin having a bitter, acrid taste and obnoxious. Odor. It's used in some cooking. Ah, yeah. 
some Middle Eastern cooking. Uh, um, and Eastern <coughs> cooking to give it a, a bitter edge. Obtained from the roots of any of several plants of the genus Ferula or Ferula. So we may not soak Asphotinerum or Mora, Aval. Oh, we have a picture. picture. Oh, I know that plant. Okay. And it goes on a little bit further here. Uh, medicinal asphotida is manufactured from the resin found in the root of the plant. It was used and is still used today as a medicine in the form of powder, creams, pills, etc., both for intestinal diseases and for strengthening the nervous system. In certain places, asphotida is even used as a spice. Consumption of asphotida in amounts of more than a gram is dangerous and can lead to poisoning. Beautiful. Aval um, noten but you can put it in vinegar. Mm -hmm. Which would probably counter, the, to some extent, the bitterness. You'd have sour and bitter together. So Rashi says that you put it in your food, which means that it's not necessarily for medicinal purposes anymore. Okay. The ein shalin et ha karshinin velo shafinotan. We may not make vetches float, the refuse of vetches. One may not soak vetches in his translation. Vetch is a species of beans used for cattle fodder. It's a mem I looked it up in the dictionary when I came across it because he doesn't tell us what vetches are. And apparently it's a member of the pea family. Hmm. It's leaky. Yeah. So we may not. Now I've also got here. We may not make the refuse of vetches. Do you just have vetches? Um, it says one may not soak vetches nor rub them. Yeah, that sounds better. We may not. That's exactly what Shul means. So, so to remove their chaff. We may not soak vetches, and we don't rub them mm. to remove the chaff. What he's expanded on. Ah, the chuff is the the outside the husk. husk. Yeah. Aval noten latoch ha kvara o latoch ha kalkala, but one may put them into a sieve or into a basket. Ein kovrin et hateven bichivra. So you can put them into a sieve or a basket to rinse them or something or to. Whatever. And it goes on, and if the chaff gets removed, so be it. The implication, the expansion. Enkabrinet ha we may not sift straw with a sieve. The law yit nenu al gabe makom gavo bishvil sheyered hamot, and we can't put into a put it on a high place so that the chaff will drop from it or blow away in the wind. Blow away in the wind. Aval not tell who. But one may take it in a sieve and pour it into the feeding trough, meaning use it as a utensil, I assume, to feed your animals. Or, that could be one thing. The other thing, I think, as we read on, it becomes possible um, that you can put, I think, Mm. My memory is correct, but you can put it in a trough that's got water on it, in it, and if the chaff washes away, well, that's bad luck. But I think that comes on. Gemara, Ibailahu, then quite Sharamai, if one soaked, uh, what's the law? Targama Rav Ada, Nasha'a Kameh Rav Yosef, Shara Chayav Khatar, if one soaked it, He's liable to a khatar, meaning it's biblically prohibited. Amalaya baye, ela ma'ata shara umsa b'maya hachi nami demichayev. But now if one soaked raw meat in water, would he be also liable? In other words, he wouldn't be. Ela ma'ara baye, midrabanan shelo yaase kederech shehu ose b'chol. It's rabbinically prohibited, so you don't act in the way that you act during the week. That's not really an answer, though, is it? Um, but not really, because they're such different things. Yeah. 
and one's biblically prohibited and one's rabbinically. Bamine Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Yanai. Mahuli Shotetha Chiltit Betsonen. What's the law concerning soaking asfetida in cold water? Ama Leya Sur. Vahanantan Ensherin et ha Chiltit Beforshin. We may not soak asfetida in warm water. Ha Betsonen Mozar. That implies cold water is permitted. Ama Leya. Im ken ma ben lil velach. If it's so, what difference is there between you, me and you? Matnitin yechidaahi, a Mishnah, is from an individual, Detanya, as also an Ebrasa. Ein shorin et hachiltit velo bechamin velo betzonen. We can't take us for neither in hot or cold water. Rabbi Yossi Omer, bechamin asur betzonen mutza. In hot water it's prohibited. In cold water, it's, it's permitted. Lamai <coughs> of uh, for what was uh, I'd the... I'd like to read his... Be my guest. ...translation, because it's a little... slightly different. Rabbi Yanai <coughs> said to him, If so, that is the difference between my knowledge and yours, as I am able to analyze the halacha more profoundly. In this case, the Mishnah is not a reliable source, as the Mishnah expresses an individual opinion. As it was taught in the Tosefta, one may neither soak asfetida in hot water nor in cold water. Rabbi Yosef Can I just stop you there, Rishik? Mm. So that's why it says the Mishnah is reflective of an individual. Mm. It's based on an individual. Okay, sorry, go on. One may neither... Uh, one may neither soak asphatida in hot water nor in cold water. Rabbi Yosef says, in hot water it is prohibited, in cold water it is permitted. Then he expands it, the Mishnah that does not prohibit cold water is in accordance <coughs> with the individual opinion of Rabbi Yosef, but the halakha is not ruled based on that opinion. No, it's based on the Tanakama, who's the unattributed majority. Lamaya mm. Zeleh, for what was a sfatida mixture made? Liukra de liba, for heaviness of the heart. One who feels a pain in his heart drinks asfatida. Rabbi Maybe, uh, Stein Salzers. Sounds like heartburn. And it could be, well, if it's used for some complaints, as the thing suggests, you know, this side note suggests, yeah. then that probably fit in with what you're saying. And it suggests here as well that it probably wasn't life-threatening. <coughs> as in your chest pain was not life-threatening. Mm. Okay. Rav Achabar Yosef Chash B'yukra Deliba So he suffered from heaviness of the heart. Ata Lakame Damar Ukva Amale zil shte tlata tikle chiltata bitlata yome. Go drink three gold dinars weights of asfetida over, uh, that would be the mixture, over the course of three days. Azal ishte ishti chamsha be shabbat or male shabbat. He went and drank a dose on the fifth day of the week, Thursday, and on Erev Shabbat. Friday, Lutzafra Zal Shal Be Midrasha. The following day, he went and asked in the study hall if he could drink his own Shabbat. <coughs> oh, okay, sorry. Amrule, Tane, sorry, Tana Deve Rav Ada Vamre La Tana Deve Mar Bar Rav Ada. Shote Adam Kav or Kabaim Veeno Choshesh. You can drink one or two calves. On Shabbos, to not be concerned. Amalehu, uh, he's added here too <coughs> about the decree prohibiting medicine because asfetida is drunk by healthy people as well. Mm. Uh, this seems to be the running theme mm. that it's either medically or not medically prohibited. Amalehu, yeah. lo I was unsure. Uh, about drinking it. Kikami Bailey Lishot, my rather mind certainly was, what's the rule about soaking? 
A similar incident happened to me. And I was not in his hand, meaning he wasn't able to say what the halacha was. This is what Rav said. <coughs> Share betonen umaniach bechama. One can soak in cold water and leave it in the sun to become warm. Commander Share. Uh, in accordance with the one who permits soaking, meaning Rabbi Yossi was the one who permitted soaking in cold water. So was this in accordance with that? Afilo lamantasar. Rav said, even according to one who prohibits soaking, it's allowed. Hane mile, that was the Tanakama before. Hane mile hecha de lo ishti klal. Those words is where one had not begun drinking at all. Aval kevan de ishti chamsha male shabta. But since he began to drink on the fifth day, <coughs> Excuse me. Since he began to drink on the fifth day, and on erev Shabbos, e lo shatev Shabbat mistaken. If he were not to drink it on Shabbos, he would be in danger and might relapse. No, the treatment has to be taken through to its end. Uh-huh. Even though you weren't in a life-threatening situation in the first place. So if you stop the treatment, you're going to die. Mr. Mech and Bar Yosef Bar Achte. So Ravacha Bar Yosef was walking while leaning on the shoulder of his nephew Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Amar le. Kimatena leve Rav Safra Ayelina. When we reached the house of Rav Safra, bring me in. Kimatu Aile, when they reached there, he brought him in. But Amine, Ravach inquired about Safra Mahu, Lachas Kusei, Kitanita, Beshabta. What's the law about rubbing a linen shirt uh, on Shabbat? Do you have rub? Yeah, yeah, rubbing and thereby softening a linen shirt. Lerakuche, Kitanita, Ka. Mikaven uh, he Are we saying he intends merely to soften it, and therefore he, we may do so? Or Dilma le ol lo olude chivara kamikaven avasur. Or perhaps he intends to make the shirt brighter, and it's, that's prohibited. Amale, so softening it is allowed, and making it brighter is prohibited. Amale. Rav Safra answered, Lerakuche kitanita ka mikaven b'shapir dame. He intends to soften linen shirt and he can do that. Kinafak. Uh, when he left, Ata ma'alei, Rav Nachman bar Yosef came and said, Rav Nachman bar Yosef, Mai ba'a marmine, what did the master ask of Rav Safra? Ma'alei, ba'ai... Mine mahu lachas kuse kitanita beshabta. I inquired, what's the law <coughs> about rubbing a linen shirt on Shabbat? On Shabbat, Ramali Shapir He said to me, one may do so, which is not exactly correct, is it? He didn't say you can do so. He said you can do it if you're intending to soften it. Mm. Well, um, Stein says. Expanded it Go on. Um, just so that it covers that. Go on. What is the halacha pertaining to rubbing and thereby softening a linen shirt on Shabbat? And he said to me, one may well do so. Good. Vitibai le lamar sudara. When I first read that, I had exactly the same uh-huh. yeah. reaction that you did. But Master should have posed. His query concerning a kachip, which um, is subject to both benefits when you rub it. 
Kedara la ka mi baili. I had no question concerning a kerchief. You, you don't have kerchief, do you? I've got a scarf. Scarf. Um, but a, a kerchief was, in fact, a, a scarf. Yeah. It's just an older word. Divai. Divai merav huna ufashitli li sura. Because I already inquired concerning it to Rav Huna, and he resolved it for me, saying that it was prohibited. Ah, no, not according to this. And he resolved it for me, and Steinsold added and said that it was permitted. And Steinsold's quotes very Okay. On that. Vitipshit. Le Lamar Musud uh, Misudra, then let Master resolve this from the ruling about the Kachif. Amale Ravacha Bar Yosa said Rav Nachman, Hata Mehze ki Olude Chivara. There, with a Kachif, it appears as though he intends to make it brighter, <coughs> and that's why he prohibited it. Hachala. Mechaze ke olude chivara, and here it does not appear as though he intends to make it brighter, and therefore rubbing it would have been permitted. The stance of sort of hi kitanita that uh, linen shirt. Mish uh Mishlafu Ladida Mikanya Shre to remove it from its rod is permitted. Kanya Mimena Asur and to slip it out of the rod, slip the rod out of the shirt, my apologies, is prohibited. Amarava Im Kli Kivai Kivai Hu Mutar, but if it's a weaver's rod, it is permitted to slip the rod out. Amarachista Okay, what was all that about? The first one, he translates it as a read. Uh, but the first one is Mukta. To, um... Because it has no, no function. To remove... The first so one was to remove you can the take shirt, shirt off, off it. the rod. You can take it off it. However... But you cannot remove the rod because the rod is Mukta. Whereas with the uh, weaver's rod, as you said, or he translates it as um, a weaver's vessel, the same thing, it has a function, which means you can touch it even if that function is not one that uh, you can use it for on Shabbat. But it has a purpose. It's not a mukta thing. What's its purpose? Wouldn't it be a weekday purpose? It's a weekday purpose, but it's a purpose. It's a designated purpose. It's a to a rod, oh, which has no purpose. Which has no purpose, and ah, therefore is mukta. That's very interesting. Okay. Amar of Chizda, hai kishta di yarka, this bunch of herbs, i chazi lamachal behemeshre letal tuleif, if it's for animal consumption, it's permitted to move them. The Elo Asir, and if not, it's prohibited to move them. Amar Rav Chia Barashi Amar Rav. Hi, Talia de Visra. Shered Letal Tule. This string of animal meat is permitted to be moved. What else would it be? This string of meat is permitted to be moved. He says, Rav Chia Barashi said, that Rav said as follows, in the case of this hook, if it is used for hanging meat, it oh, is this permitted. this string of this hook of the meat that you hang with. Ah. And, of course, and we hook. have a picture <laughs> of yeah. a hook a with a bit of hook. meat on it. Yeah. So the hook, you can move that. Yeah. And you can understand why, in the light of what we've just discussed. It has a purpose. Hang on. It's referring to the meat, not the hook or the string, in my case. It's permitted to be moved. Not according to this. This is talking about the So hook. why is it allowed to be moved? 
I'll, I'll read his full translation, Wait. okay? Rav Chia Ashi said that Rav said as follows, in the case of this hook, if it is used for hanging meat, it is permitted to move it, as it is also suitable for other uses. However, if it is a hook for hanging fish, it is prohibited to move it because it smells bad, in other words, and is used exclusively for fish. So the first, the meat hook can be used for a variety of things. The fish hook has no other use apart from fish because it stinks. And therefore you can't move it because there is no other conceivable Shabbat use. But the one that meat is, you might hang your ca- jacket on it or, you know, it's or a chair from it or... It certainly seems to make sense and ties in with Rubber's previous mm, comment. That's what's happening. Rub sisters. Well, it doesn't tie in with Rub sisters. It ties in with Rubber's comment, but it doesn't tie in with Rub sister because he talked about the herbs, yep. which is the food, and that's so it doesn't tie in with that one, but it ties in with Weaver's rod. Um, so the way I've got it is uh, the meat is permitted because if it's hanging up on the hook, which you would assume it's drying on the hook. See, my, my objection to that interpretation is that as this meat is raw and it's Shabbat, you can't cook it. Yes, yeah, so what it's saying is you can move it because um, because uh, you can eat it straight off the... If it's hanging up like it's drying on the on the... Like a... Oh, you mean like that South African like stuff? Like full tongue, yeah. Um, so, and that's why specifically... In fact, it's funny because just last weekend my friend was showing me his little hooks that he made himself. Oh, his homemade biltong. For his homemade biltong. Do, do they dry it in the, in the air or in a slow oven? In a... Um, in a he bought a um, container like this. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Put a light globe. Was it a light? I think a light globe at either end, mm-hmm. and which would generate a certain amount of low heat. Yeah, and had some holes for vents towards the top, and maybe towards the bottom as well. And um, and uh, yeah, just hung the meat inside. And so you got spices and stuff water. on it before he hanged it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. Let's hope he doesn't catch any interesting diseases from it. Yeah, and so then it says about the fish, it's forbidden because you can't eat with, with raw meat. You can eat it um, off the hook like that, but with there's no such thing as raw fish that you can eat off the hook. Well, not true. again, that's not true. No, that's because, not true. Um, you you can cure fish and make it edible by putting lime juice or vinegar on it, um, rubbing it with salt and sugar. All these things. Mm. make it edible while raw. I can't think of fish that can be eaten raw. I, I, I've had fish that's been soaked oh. in lime juice. Sushi. Yeah, sushi is a great example. That's but a perfect example, isn't it? Uh, uh, with... with and then there's that, um, I forget the name, uh, Swedish and Danes, they, they have a way of dealing <coughs> with uh, salmon where they rub it with salt and sugar and uh, dill and leave it for a little while and it's perfectly edible and very tasty. Yeah. Amarav Katina. One who stays in the middle of a bed is considered to be standing on the stomach of a woman. Is that the way you've got it? Yes, and he's added, just as he would certainly injure the woman, he will certainly break the bed, according to the Kayani. <laughs> the Gemara comments. I was, by the way, the Gemara, Paul comments um, that I was. Uh, I woke up this morning and, and my wife was on the wrong side of me, and 
I said to her, what are you doing over there? And she said, you were you're too close to my side last night. <laughs> <laughs> so she went and got on yeah. in my side. Well, my love, um, the love Miltaki, the Gemara says there is actually no problem. Um, oh, there you go. I feel better now. Um, Aricha Torskola who buys vegetables should buy uh, a bundle that contains longer herbs. Well, kisha ki kisha. One bunch is as thick as the next bunch, but or can be mela, and the length of the longer vegetables represents an automatic benefit. What you're talking about bunches. is if you're buying snake, if you've got several packets of snake, several bundles of snake beans, snake beans, do you okay. know them? Yeah. Okay, that um, each one's $2. Yeah. Go for the longest snake beans. Why? Because you get more than if you go for the shorter snake beans. Aha. Uh -huh. That's what they're getting at. Okay. It sounds, telling it's, you, it sounds like what it sounds too uh, pashut. <laughs> well, it's how to survive when you're a student with hardly any income. <laughs> this is what all this is about. <laughs> Excellent. Mara uh, Chizda Barbe Razazarin Kanya Lisbin Aricha Toriskol who buys reeds should buy one with longer reeds. Tuna ki tuna one bundle is as the next bundle the Urka Mimela. So one bundle is as thick as the next one, or can we and the extra length you get an automatic benefit. Vamara Chista Barbe Rav, a Torah scholar, de la Nefisha Le Rifta, who does not have much bread. Lo Lechul Yarka should not eat herbs, Mishum de Garir, because they wet one's appetite. And there's no not enough bread to satisfy your appetite. Vamara Chista Ana Lo the Aniyoti Achli Yarka. I myself did not eat herbs when I was poor. The La Baati Ruti Achli Yarka. Nor did I eat herbs when I was wealthy. The Aniyoti Mishum de Garia. When I was poor, because they wet my appetite. The Ati Ruti. When I was wealthy. Da Mina Hech de Ayel Yarka Leul Bisra Vachavre. Because I said, where herbs can enter, let meat and fish enter instead. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> a Torah scholar who does not have much bread should not divide his bread into small pieces, many small pieces, and eat many small meals. Rather, she should save his bread until he has enough for a large, satisfying meal. Bar be rav de lo nefishale, rifta lo lifta. Torah scholar who does not have much bread should not divide the bread. My tama, what's the reason? De lo avid ba'ain yafa, because he will not apportion the bread generously. So he should not break it for guests. Uh huh. And what is the reason? What is the reason? Uh, oh, so you know, I had I said, and because he'll not apportion it generously. Mm. Yeah. Bamarachista. Yeah. Yeah. Ana mikara lo havai betzana. I myself originally would not break bread ad tishtai yadi bechule mana unless I had first examined the entire basket. With my hand, for Ashkechi be called Tzarki, and found that there was enough for my needs. So I assume, I'm guessing, but I assume that in the Yeshivot or wherever, there was a, a basket of food left around for people to eat, possibly, or for the students as a, a daily allowance. And you'd stick your hand and feel around. If there was plenty left, you know, you'd grab what you needed. Mm. Um, but if there wasn't all that much there, you know, you'd, you'd grab plenty and then divide it with your friend. Mm. But if there wasn't, there was only enough for you, you'd pull that out and eat that. 
I'm guessing that's what we're mm. getting at here. But it's certainly... There's no... Life is tough. There's no mention of it. Ramara Hista, Haimant Esha Le Lamecha Nahama de Sare Bachad Hitani person is a a barley bread and instead eats wheat bread, Kavar Mishum Bal Tashkis, transgresses the sin of you shall not destroy Vamara Papa. Hai man de Esha Lemishti Shikra Vashate Hamra, any person is liable able to drink beer and instead drinks wine. Ove Mishum Bal Tashki transgresses the sin of you shall not destroy. Peter? Um, read on a little clarify that. The love miltahi, but there is actually no problem. Bal Tashkit the Kufa Adif you shall destroy with regards to one's body is greater consideration. Amarakhista, Barbe Rav Delayed Le Mishha Toroskola who does not have oil. Um Okay, to, sorry, we okay, moved on. Go on. Okay, he's added after prohibition against the structure of one's body takes precedence. It is preferable for one to care for his body by eating higher quality food than to conserve his money. The whole point about being destructive is that you're destroying your wealth. <coughs> so, but if eating a better quality food preserves your body, then... Just to be clear, wheat or barley bread, isn't wheat bread better? Wheat bread is of higher quality. So therefore... And wine is of higher quality than beer. Right. So what they're saying is, you don't eat barley bread in order to preserve your money. The, the first person was saying, by eating barley bread... Where's the baltash hit though? Well, that comes into it a bit later. What The first bloke saying... You're being destructive. Oh, so you're, you're destroying your, your money wealth. by... by Buying this extravagant, high-quality stuff when you can maintain your body on the lower-grade barley bread. Or, you know, you're uh, destroying your wealth by um, drinking wine when you could have beer. Now I see. I think that's what's being yep. That sounds perfect. Bamara Ah, so, um, yeah. He does not have oil to clean his hands with after the meal. Nimshi Bemaya de Haritze should wash with water in the pits, which was probably a bit disgusting. Well, it goes, and he said it, as the scum that accumulates in it is as useful as oil. Oh, yeah. Oil float, disgusting mm. stuff, right? Amarachista. Barbe Rav de Zavinum Salis bin Unka, Taurus Goli buys me, should buy neck meat, eat beets, lata mine bistra, for there is in it three types of meat. 21. The cut of meat contains fatty meat, lean meat, and tough sinews of the neck. Mm. He hasn't said that, but I worked that out for myself. Maharal in Chidushaya Gadot explains that the last two teachings provide an insight into God's bountiful kindness. For since most luxuries are beyond the means of a poor person, God sees to it that there is always an, an inexpensive substitute that mimics each and every luxury. Thus, he provides a certain type of water to substitute for oil and a certain type of meat from which a poor person will enjoy a variety of tastes that only one who could afford many different cuts of meat would otherwise enjoy. I don't know if you recall this, and I think it was back in Gemara Brachot, but when one of the Torah scholars wanted a piece of meat. He he said, "Give me a piece from near the." He didn't say from near the cut. He said from. That that was what he was meaning, but he used a metaphorical word from near the cut. Oh, okay. from from where the life was taken from it. That's ah. what. That's what he said. No, I don't remember that, but uh, I know, for instance, uh, neck chops are very good for making stewy yeah. sort of things, and you get the additional pleasure of sucking meat and stuff off the bones. Yeah. That's very interesting. I'm surprised they don't bring me in to this. 
Bamara Christa Barbera Zabin Zabin Kit Kitunita Lisban Mid Nahar Abad Tarskala who buys linen should buy from Naharaba. By the river. Abba. Vinichvar Vinichavra called Latin Yomin and she clean it every thirty days. Dim Patya Le Tresa Yarche Shata so that it will fill his need for a garment for a full twelve months. So it was a very good quality shirt. But Anna Arba and I'll be a guarantor to this. That's very nice. And uh, interesting that, you know, you have a garment that you wash once a month. People generally then would have smelt anyway, so it wouldn't have been terribly noticeable. Mm. But uh, also people didn't have lots of garments. We know that from the law that you, if you'd taken a, a garment in pledge from a poor person, you had to get back to them at night. Mm. So they could cover themselves and sleep. So, there's now, the kitunita is the linen garment. Mm. So, my kitunita, what's, where does this word kitunita come from? It comes from kita na'a. How do you translate that? A fine class. A fine class. Is what he's got. As fine clothing provides one entry into a well-dressed class of people. Uh. So my translation is a fine fellowship. Same quality. Thing. In essence. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Vamar Rav Chista, Bar Be Rav Lo Leitiv Asipta Chadata. Torah scholars should not sit on a new hemp mat. Dim Chalia. Mane, because it ruins his clothing. And he's added, as its dampness ruins his clothing. Ah. bar be ravlo lishadar, mane le ushpize le chavre le. A Torah scholar should not send his tunic to his hostess to be cleaned for him. To love orach ara. It's not proper. Dilma chaze. Be midi va'ati lemiganya, lest she see something on it and come to be repulsive to her. And he will be demeaned. Amar le... Do you want me to say anything? No? Well, just that the, according to this, it's a uh, seventh mission they're worrying about. Ah, okay. Amar le hu rabchizya livnate, rabchizya to his daughters, you should be modest before your husband. You should not eat bread in your husband's presence. You should not eat herbs at night. You should not eat dates at night. You should not eat drink beer at night. And you shouldn't drink egg, uh, eat egg at all. And you should... This is my addition. You shouldn't eat egg at all, and you should wear a veil over your head. Sorry, I'm just adding that in. Anyway, he's given reasons here for each of these things of Hester's advice to his daughters. Okay, so eat bread. Be modest before your husbands, and do not eat bread before your husbands, lest you eat too much and be demeaned in their eyes. Eat herbs. Uh, do not eat vegetables at night, as vegetables cause bad breath. Do not eat dates at night, and do not drink beer at night, as these loosen the bowels. The Lord teach and do not relieve yourselves in the place where your husbands relieve themselves, so that they will not be revolted by you. The kare abacha inish. And when a man is knocking at the door, Lord teim run mano, don't say, who is it? In uh, the masculine form. Ella Mani. Who, who is, is it, say, uh, but rather, who is it in the feminine form, avoiding creating the impression that you have dealings with, with other men? Oh. That's, that's actually, 
I've got to say, that's actually brilliant. I never thought about that one. What do you think about that one? I think the Taliban would like that one too. <gasps> the slut she used. Masculine. The masculine. Oh, she's entertaining men all day long. That's very interesting. That's do you very want good. to delete that? No, not at all. Um, but you would imagine that if she is around women all day, mm. which may be likely the case, then habitually she would be saying money. Mm. On the other hand, though, if she's used to having her brothers pop in from time to time into the house... or well, there are Talmud scholars popping in all the time to see her husband. Yeah. Nakit marganita b'chada yede b'chura b'chada yede the husbands when cohabiting, the husbands will hold your pearl in one hand and the kiln in one. I really don't know what I Okay, know what I'll read this. In order to demonstrate the value of modesty to his daughters, Rav Chista held a pearl in one hand and a clod of earth in the other. The pearl he showed them immediately, and the clod of earth he did not show them until they were upset due to their curiosity, and then he showed it to them. This taught them that a concealed object is more attractive than one on display, even if it is less valuable. You don't want to know what it's got here. Oh, I do, <laughs> now that you've said that. So, I'll quote exactly what's written here. Rav Chista here teaches his daughters, using very delicate language, the ideal way for them to play their part in intimate relations with their husbands. In referring to their female anatomy, he used the word pearl to refer to their breasts and the word kiln to refer to their private parts. Marganita Achvelehu, you should offer them the pearl, the Hura Lachvelehu ad Demitsta Aran, but the kiln you should not offer them until they are tormented, the Hadar Achvelehu, and only then should you offer it to them. <laughs> Look, I mean, the picture conjures up in your mind. Yeah. And then we move on to Vetch's floating. You know, it's. <laughs> You know, keep them upset and bothered, you know. Until they're tormented. Hmm. I think I... Ain't I prefer Steinsaltz on that. Just because it's less... It's more mood. respectable, yes. Ain't yeah. Shalini Takashi... Mind you, I find mine makes much more sense. I think, I think it's probably closer to the line. Ain't Shalini Takashi Nin. Particularly we, given the fact that women were not supposed to appeal to their husbands intellectually. I mean, the purpose of the woman was to... Have babies. ...the house and have babies. Do you hear that? Angel, in the case you mean, we should not soak vetches, yeah. but you can put them in a sieve or a basket. Mats me in the loki haitana... Our Mishnah is not in accordance with the view of this other Tana, the Tanya. Rabbi Eliezer, Eliezer ben Yaakov Omer, Ein mashkichin bichvara kol ikar. We may not use this tip at all. Full stop. Who knows? What is the halacha, Peter? Uh, well, it doesn't ca um, say anything. However, there's one here about do not eat bread before your husbands. Uh, some comment has explained that this prohibition is referring to a case where the husband has already eaten his fill. His wife continues eating. Uh, if his wife continues eating, she will appear gluttonous in his eyes, according to the Meiri. Alternately, Rav Hista is not referring to eating at mealtimes Rather, he is advising that a wife should not eat between meals. Mishnah. Gorfin milifnei haptam. We may sweep out a trough from before a stall ox, a feeding trough. 
ומסקלין, סורי, ומסלקין לצדדין, סורי, לצדדין מפני הראי, and we may move excess water to the sides because of the excrement. דברי רבי דוסה, וחכמים אוסרים, נוטלין מלפני בהמה זו ונותנין לפני בהמה זו בשבת. We can take feed from before this animal and place it before this other animal on Shabbat. And now his translation is quite different. And the Mishnah, one may sweep hay from before an animal that is being fattened. And one may move hay to the sides for animal for an animal that grazes on its own in the field. This is according to Rabbeinu Hananil. Yeah, but that's, that must be what comes in the Gemara later. This is a statement of Rabbi Dossa. Because this is just the Mishnah. Mm. I mean, I mean... What I read is purely the... Uh, Can you read purely the bold on that? Yes, one may sweep from before an animal that is uh, being fattened, and one may move to the sides for an animal that... Fattened is in bold. Yep. Notlin milifnei behemazo, venotnin lifnei behemazo. So it just says animal... This animal and to that this animal. animal. Yeah. Gemara, Ibai Lehu. They, the students of the academy, are quite. Ravanan Aresha Pligage, do the sages dispute the Mishnah's first clause, which prohibits the cleaning out of the trough, or Asefa Pligay, or do they dispute the latter clause, uh, which and prohibit us to move feet to the side, or Atarvayehu Pligay, or do they dispute both rulings and prohibit both? Tashma, the Tanya. The Chachamim Omrim, Echad Zev Echad Zev Lo Yisal Yisal Kenu Let Tidan Let Tadin Let Tadin Let Tadin. Both this and this, the dirt in a trough and the feed before it becomes ruined, may not be moved to the side. Amar Rav Chizda, Machloket Be'evus Shel Karka, the dispute concerns a trough whose floor is made of earth. Aval, oh that makes sense because you dig furrows perhaps, maybe. Aval Be'evus Shel Kli, Divrei Komuta, but in a trough which is utensil, all agreed is permitted to sweep it out. Be'evus Shel Karka, Mi ikalaman tishare. Does anyone permit sweeping out a trough made of earth? Where the floor is made of earth? Haka mashve gumot. Why? He will probably even out crevices, which is a violation. Ella i itma hachi itma rather. If an explanation was said, this is what it said. Amara chista machloket be evos shokli. The dispute. Concerns a trough which is a utensil. Aval be evos shel kaka divrei kolasur. Okay. Venoslin. So the Mishnah says venoslin milifne behema. We can take feed from this and give it to the other one. Whatever. Tanachada. Noslin milifne behema shepiha yafe. There we go, Peter. Now this is what it's saying. So. We can take feed from before an animal which has a fine mouth, which if I would also mean to say perhaps it's got plenty of food. Well, read on, read on. They're not near leaf near behema shepiha ra, and place it before an animal with a poor mouth. Ah, the tanya idach, not lean me leaf near behema shepiha ra. We may take from before an animal which has a poor mouth, but not near leaf near behema shepiha yafe. Amar Abaye, Idi the Idi, both this and that. The Ma Kame Chamara La Kame Torah Shaklinan. We may take from before a donkey to place before an ox. Mikame Torah La Kame Chamara Lo Shaklinan, but we may not take from before an ox to place before a donkey. Uh huh. Continue. 
Vahadakatani and when the Baraisa taught, not some Muslim Behema Shapiha Yafe, we may take from for an animal which has a foul mouth. The Khamor the late lady re re was talking about a donkey which does not drool into its feed. So that's a fine mouth. Venotnin Lifne Behema Shapira and place before an animal with a poor mouth the para referring to an ox to eat la rire which rules into its feet. Baha de Katani not Lifne Behema Shapira and when the second brace teaches we may take from for this animal which has a poor mouth, the Hamor de Lord Dayek Bachil refers to a donkey which is not a discriminating eater. Therefore, the reference to being poor, because it eats everything, like thorns and thistles as well. Then not me lifne behema shepiha yafe, and place it before an animal with a fine mouth, the para, the daika, the achla, which an ox, referring to an ox, which has a, is a discriminating eater. As my, and I think that from my bio onwards, they're all wrong. Go ahead. And that what it's taught, Teaching is, one may take hay from before an animal whose mouth is fine and place it before an animal whose mouth is foul. Yes. And one may take hay from an animal whose mouth is foul and place it in front of an animal whose mouth is fine. Yes. means precisely what it says. You can you take can one, one to the other, one to the other. No. Don't worry about it at all. Whether the thing drools or doesn't drool, you can take food from one to the other. That's the straightforward meaning of the Baraisa. Mm. You know, don't concern yourself. If your animal needs food, and, you know, one animal's got lots of food and the other hasn't, you can take from one and give to the other to feed it. Mm. 